Disney cruises are a magical experience, but did you know that there are common booking mistakes that can affect your trip? Booking your cruise is a lot more than just selecting the ship and the date. For example, some people forget to check for promotions or discounts before booking. Booking during peak season can lead to higher prices and fewer available rooms. It's not just about the money though. What type of documentation do you need? What type of rooms do you need? The most common mistakes new cruisers make is not booking their activities and excursions in advance. And of course we're going to get into everything else including the money Money, the food, the fun. So grab a snack, sit back, let's dive in. Now before you can take care of any of those booking details on Disney Cruise Line, the first thing you need to do is actually pick your cruise. People have many different ways for choosing their cruise. Some people have to go strictly with school schedules. When schools are out of session are going to be peak cruising times, which means both prices are higher and those cruises are typically completely sold out. If possible, we suggest to go off peak seasons just to help with the rates and the flow of people. It just seems to be a little bit Bit less congested and who doesn't like to save money on the exact same cruise January February and of course during hurricane seasons those are typically going to be your lowest rates available and if you are looking at budget you want to make sure and book your cruise as soon as it is released that is going to be the lowest price you're going to find of course that doesn't mean you shouldn't book if it's already been announced go see what dates and money fit in your budget and go from there the great thing about the Disney Cruise Line website is they do have it listed by dollar amounts from lowest to highest which makes it easy if you really just want to go strictly based on budget you can just find that cheapest cruise that they have in addition to season and funds if you're choosing by ship there are three categories of ships the newest is the Disney wish in their Triton class this holds approximately 4,000 guests the Disney wish is doing three and four night cruises to the Bahamas the Disney dream and Disney fantasy also hold approximately 4,000 guests they have a different design and layout of the ship from the wish one of the things we really love about the dream and the fantasy is their adult district. It is nice just to get away once in a while. It's typically a lot quieter. Unless you're there during Match Your Mate, then it's gonna get loud. Match Your Mate is one of their game shows that they do. It is for adults only. It will be one night of your cruise. Make sure you check that one out. It is so funny. Yeah, the other two ships in Disney Cruise Line fleets are the Magic and the Wonder. These are their first two cruise ships and they hold approximately 2,400 guests. We really love the Wonder because it's got the Cadillac Lounge and I just like the way it feels. It's a little more intimate. The crowds are still seemingly large but it's just not quite as much because of the capacity and if you can get the magic or the wonder going to castaway key well that's a really great one check that out because of course with only 2400 guests on board there's going to be a lot less people on castaway key castaway key is disney cruise line's private island and it is really beautiful another thing you might want to consider when you are choosing your ship is whether or not you have young ones in your party that might prefer different youth club experiences now if the youth clubs are a huge huge thing for your family, then this is what we suggest. For ages 14 to 17, these teens can go to a club called Vibe. Vibe is fun on the Magic Wonder and the Wish, but it's a lot cooler on the Dream and the Fantasy. They have their own pool deck out there, and it's just a really modern space. The teens really seem to love it. My son went to Vibe when he was 14. I didn't see him the whole trip. He loved it. And if you have youths ages 3 through 12, you will want to look into that as well. If they really love Star Wars and Marvel, the Wish might be a consideration for you because they have Star Wars Cargo Bay on the Disney Wish. They have a Marvel section where they can try on their own Marvel super suits. And they also have Worlds of Marvel, which is one of the main dining restaurants. One other consideration for your family could be the Marvel or Pixar Days at Sea. They are typically January through March. And then the last consideration is, do you want the cruise based on the destination ports? Do you want a transatlantic cruise, a European cruise, the Caribbean, the Bahamas? And of course, if you want to go see that private island, cast to Aki, that's going to be those Caribbean and Bahamian cruises. One other thing to consider when you are choosing your cruise is where your stateroom is and which type you are going to have. If you are at all concerned with nausea, they highly recommend an ocean view room so that you can have a view of the horizon. That being said, you can also get a veranda, obviously, which would have a view of the horizon. We did not realize until our third cruise that a veranda could actually be a little worse for nausea if it's really bad. We were on the Wonder. We had a veranda. My son was on the couch bed and it made him nauseous because it was just a little too much. When he was on the bed though, which is a little more into the center of the ship, it didn't bother him. The very first cruise, we were on deck to mid. If you are concerned with nausea at all, low and center is the best place for the least amount of movement. 
And one other booking consideration, if you're really not sure if you have somebody that will like cruising because of the ocean or whatever, a three night cruise might be a good place to start because you can choose one that's at ports all day, which means the ship is going to be moving slowly and will have land in sight at all times. Otherwise, I don't recommend a three-night cruise. It just seems way too fast. That being said, The Wish only has three and four-night cruises, so, you know, you gotta take these things into consideration. We absolutely love a seven-night cruise as a minimum, but I'll take a four-night. So that's one of the first things we suggest is figure out what time of year, what your budget is, what you really want to experience on the cruise, and from there, you want to book your cruise. When you book your cruise, it is it's very important to look into trip insurance. Whether or not you get that is completely up to you, but we do strongly encourage that you research trip insurance and whether or not that might be a good idea for your trip. Once you have made those decisions and booked your trip, which by the way does not have to be paid in full unless you are going very close to cruise date. And of course Disney makes it really easy. You can pay a 20% deposit and then just make payments as long as you have it paid in full by the paid in full date. Typically that's 90 or 120 days prior to your sale depending on how long the cruise is. Another great thing about Disney cruise line is if you are prior to your paid in full date you can actually get a full refund for your cruise if for some reason you're not going. I highly suggest changing your date if you're not gonna go because it is wonderful just to have a cruise booked. And here's a pro tip for you Disney Cruise Line is the only cruise line that I know that does this but that's because of the characters. Once you've booked your cruise you can schedule a character call. You can actually do a couple of these. You can have Mickey and Minnie call, Goofy, I think the other selection was Donald Duck. You go onto their website to book this character call. You'll select your itinerary, the dates, and when you would like the call to come. It'll come through an 800 number and you can surprise your kids with a character call from Mickey or Minnie announcing their cruise. It's so fun. Just another little sprinkle of pixie dust while you're waiting for your cruise. Once you have selected your cruise, you want to be ready to book your port excursions and activities when your booking date opens. If you are a brand new Disney cruiser, that is typically 75 days prior to your sale date. You'll be able to go online or on the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. Another pro tip, download that Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. It is literally gold. Once you are on the ship, it will have everything. All of the activities, reminders, character meet and greets. You can find your invoice folio in there. Menus are going to be in there and you can do your activity selections and online check-in through this app as well. It is a little glitchy sometimes. I suggest having your computer open as well as your app because what happens is 75 days prior to your sale date if you are a brand new cruiser, when those booking windows open at midnight eastern standard time, things will get selected very fast. So I have two suggestions here. One, be ready, have your app open, your computer open, and if you've got a couple of people, that helps too. Also, know what you want to book. Are you booking specialty dining brunch at their Italian restaurant, Paolo? Do you want a specialty dining dinner at their French restaurant, Remy or Ashante? Are you looking for princess gatherings, port excursions, whatever it is, have your little list because this is where you're going to select them. These reservations for dining will sell out. These port excursions will sell out. That's okay. You can't do everything on every every trip. So if for some reason you don't get something you want at all as far as these activities go, just enjoy the cruise. There is so much going on. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. For those reservations that are really important to you that you want to make sure you get somehow, get on at midnight Eastern Standard Time with multiple people. If you are not able to get the selections you want, try again in like an hour because everybody's trying at once and so sometimes things will just open up. Also, keep trying. People are going to change their plans. When that happens, you can grab a reservation. If for some reason there is a activity or excursion reservation that you are not able to get before you get on the ship, as soon as you get on the ship, go to guest services. They will have a certain place for dining, a certain place for alcohol tastings, and go see if they have what you want available. They hold back some reservations sometimes, so that is a possibility. They also will have a wait list if they are completely booked, and that can help as well. Sometime, pro tip, if you really want to go to an alcohol tasting and they are sold out, you typically can go to the event when it's starting and sometimes they have a spot or two because people don't show up. You know, it's vacation. Plans change. Here are three common mistakes people make when booking a Disney Cruise Line excursion. First of all, when you arrive at port, you are able to get off the ship without a Disney Cruise Line excursion. This changed for a while because of COVID. Double check, but I'm pretty sure on all of the ports, it's back to quote unquote normal where you can just get off and explore the port. Now, if you are on a Disney Cruise 
led excursion and they are going to get back late, the cruise ship will almost always wait for you. If you are at the port on a third party led excursion or just on your own and don't get back to the ship in time, the ship will not wait for you. So that's a huge consideration. You can get some of these excursions cheaper by going through a third party, but it's kind of nice to know that the ship's not going to leave you if for some reason you're a little late getting back. That being said, always make sure you get back before the time that you're supposed to be there because you definitely want to be on that ship when it's leaving. Okay, so three common mistakes people make when booking their Disney Cruise Line excursions. One is you need to consider the physical demands of the excursions. Some of them may require a certain level of fitness or involve strenuous activities like hiking or snorkeling. It's very important to carefully read the excursion description to make sure it's a good fit for you and your family. Within that point also, you want to make sure if you have youth that will be going on the excursion that they are allowed in the age range. Some excursions you have to be at least eight years old. Some of them you only need to be three. Make sure you check into that. Number two, people often forget to pack the necessary items for the excursion. Things like sunscreen, water shoes, insect repellent. Make sure you take these into consideration when you're choosing your excursions and what you need on that day. And third, don't assume that you can cancel or change your excursion at any time. They do have a specific cancellation policy and there are usually specific deadlines and penalties for canceling or changing your excursion. That being said, if you are on the ship and you really want to change it, just go to the Port Adventure desk. Let them know. They might be able to help you. We had an excursion book. We just didn't really want to do it. We realized once we got on the ship, they had somebody on a wait list that did want to do that excursion. So we got out of that easy. No cancel fee. Somebody else got to use it. It worked out for everybody. So make sure you consider the those things for your excursions. The other thing you'll want to reserve is youth clubs. Specifically, if you are going to be using the nursery, you'll want to pre-register them for that. With the youth clubs, they will have registration forms online as part of the pre-cruise registration process. After you book your Disney cruise, you will receive information on how to access the online planning center. There you can manage your cruise activities and preferences, as well as register your child for the youth club, of course, you'll want to reserve those nursery hours and the nursery is an additional cost. The youth clubs for ages 3 through 17 do not have an additional charge, but the nursery does. There may also be a waiver and release form to be signed. Make sure if you are traveling with any children without one of their parents that you check into any necessary documentation that might be needed. Also, if you're going to Castaway Key and you want your teen to be able to get off the ship without you, you will need to complete a form for that as well. The first time we went, my son was 14 I did not realize this. He got stuck on the ship. Oopsie. And one of the things that we like to do is get a little pouch for our cell phones. Just kind of helps, especially if you're going snorkeling. Just make sure it works before you get to the ocean. After you've chosen your activities, the next thing you'll want to do is at your 30 day prior to sail mark, this is when you can do your online check-in and port arrival time selection. With this check-in, you will need the travel documents that everyone will be using, birth certificates, passports, etc. Photos of everybody. And this is when you will select your port arrival time. Time. Typically about 11 a.m. is the earliest time that will be available unless you're cruising concierge or back-to-back. -back. I like to go in there and select the port arrival time first and then go back and fill in the details. And same with this. If you don't get a time that you wanted, go back and keep checking. They will change. Not always, but usually. We like to get the earliest port arrival time. That way we can get on the ship as soon as possible. One other thing with port arrival times. If you are taking Disney Cruise transportation from Disney Resorts, you will not have a port arrival time because you will get there when the bus gets you there. One of the big things people often forget to do when they're booking their Disney Cruise Line vacation is note any dietary restrictions. Disney is great with dietary restrictions, especially on the cruise ship. That being said, you do need to note this prior to getting on the ship so that they are aware of it, any dietary restrictions you may have. And once you are on the ship, do not assume they just know you have the restrictions. You will literally see crew members who will know you by name so it's easy to think that they will know everything about you and your family and to be honest they know a lot I'm not quite sure how they do it but they do but it's still up to you to make sure and mention your dietary restrictions especially if you're going to quick service or the buffet make sure and check into that depending on what your restrictions are sometimes they will want you to order the food the night before so they can have that ready for you so just make sure you mention that in advance and mention it when you get on the ship as well and also mention it to your dining 
team. As many of you probably know, Disney Cruise Line has rotational dining. That means they have three main dining restaurants with two assigned dining times. Typically, those with the younger tiny humans will want to get the earlier dining time, approximately 5.45, and the ones with the older and adults only will go for the later dining time, that's approximately 8.15. Just so you know, dinner is about an hour and a half process with Disney Cruise Line. You'll have a food server, a beverage server, and a head server that will travel with you each night through those main dining restaurants. So tell them the first night about any food restrictions you have. That way they know for the rest of your trip and you can discuss with them how to address those food or dietary restrictions. You'll want to request that early or late dining time when you book your cruise. And if you want your own table, you'll want to request that as well. Disney Cruise Line does family seating, so they will seat families together. When it was my son and I, I was traveling as a single parent and we had a table with two other single moms and their teenage sons. It was a lot of fun. Since that cruise, we have requested our own table and we are always able to get that. It's not guaranteed, but certainly worth asking. And one other note about dining actually is if you happen to be going to specialty dining and will not be at your main dining restaurant that evening, let your servers know the evening before. That way they're not waiting for you. One other huge mistake a lot of first time cruisers make is not considering their budget. There is a lot that is included with your Disney cruise. It actually can be quite easy to get on the ship and not spend additional money as long as you've already prepaid your tips. We've got a whole video about tips if you need to look into that. But if you've prepaid tips and if you bring carry-on wine or beer with you and don't expect to buy any souvenirs, coffees, etc., you literally could just get through the cruise without any additional expenses on top of those prepaid gratuities. Now, we like to always bring additional money for the gratuities for our stateroom host and the servers. They're just all so fabulous. We like to make sure we have extra tip money budgeted. Here are things though that you will want to consider for your budget. Room service is almost completely included in the cost of your cruise. It is available 24 hours a day. They have a few items on their room service menu that will not be included. Things like bagged popcorn, canned sodas, it'll be listed on the menu which ones do have an additional charge. But almost everything on room service is included. So remember that because their Greek salad is awesome, especially on the Wonder. It's a little different on the Fantasy. I don't know why. Everybody loves the all hands on deck cheese plate. People really love the BLT. It's got a lot of bacon and I just love a nice classic Caesar at the end of the day. Regardless of what you love though, make sure you check into that. It's kind of fun. Also, you can get warm cookies and milk at bedtime. You can even get a Mickey bar, make yourself a little ice cream sandwich. A lot of fun. And with room service, you do want to have a little bit of money for a tip. We like to do a dollar or two per item. You can bring cash, but you can also just do that on your phone now as well. Things you will want to consider extra budget money for port excursions, transportation in ports, souvenirs in ports. I highly recommend a dated ornament from every port you go to. Obviously, if you're going to get any food, coffee, etc., you're going to want money for that in the ports. On the ship, they have coffee that you can get for free with room service. They have coffee up on deck where they have soda fountains that are included with the cost of your cruise. But the good coffee is in Cove Cafe and it's an additional charge. It's really good though. The mocha experience is my favorite. Check it out. It does have alcohol in it though but so good. Other things you might want to budget for, the rainforest room experience in the spa, massages, haircuts, specialty dining, tips for specialty dining because that's separate, alcohol tastings, room packages are actually paid in advance. We really love the romance package. Check that one out. It's a fun addition to your cruise. We also highly recommend getting a dated ornament or coffee mug on the ship as well. And then they will have a few other things like beignets that'll be an additional charge if you get them with your coffee. And of course, if you've got youth or tiny humans, they're probably going to want something too. One of the great ways for your youth to budget for the trip is to let them earn money before they go and get Disney gift cards. Those Disney gift cards are like cash on the ship. That way they've already got money for what they want to buy. And it's a great way to keep them involved building up to the cruise as well. One other thing we highly suggest you budget for is their online placeholder. That is a $250 deposit and then you can choose which cruise you would like to apply it to once you're back at home. If you already know which cruise you want, you can make a deposit on that, secure the reservation that way. But if you get the $250 placeholder, 
While you are on the ship, you will save 10% on the cost of the cruise, which is always nice. I hope these mistakes to avoid help you plan a stress-free and enjoyable Disney Cruise Line vacation. If you haven't seen it yet, we have 11 things you don't want to miss on Disney Cruise and everything you need to know for your Disney Cruise in 2023. We've also got in-depth videos on practically everything in this list, so go check those out. As Walt Disney once said, laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. It is really a joy for me to get to help you plan your dream cruise for you and your family. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining in the Disney fun. We'll see you real soon with some more Disneyds.